Bert and Anton, when we find them as adults, they have been around the block a few times, and they've spent most of their childhood and certainly all of their adulthood together, and there's some animosity brewing between them. So they finally decide to do the trick to end all tricks, uh, the hot box, a, a glass box dangling over the Vegas Strip. And, uh, and the, the trick goes horribly wrong, as you might expect. And that begins the downfall of their relationship and of Burt Wonderstone. Well, clearly Burt hates Steve Gray. He is a threat, um, and he is all the things that Burt is not. He is, he is new. He appeals to a completely different and, uh, and more youthful audience. Um, the, the average age of Burt's audience has risen steadily. Uh, and Steve, you know, Steve Gray, he's, he's the new kid on the block. He's the hot kid, and uh, Burt doesn't like it at all. But more importantly than that, Burt feels that Steve Gray has no respect for the art of magic. And this is something very important to Burt. You know, this is something that he grew up with, and he respects the, the rules and the laws and sort of the guidelines of this magic culture. Um, and Steve Gray thumbs his nose at it, and Burt Bert does, uh, does not care for that. Alan Arkin is uh, probably my biggest idol in real life. He is somebody that I've, um, I've watched and studied, I guess, for years. Um, I've always been a fan of his and his work. And then when I got a chance to work with him on Little Miss Sunshine, that was like a dream come true. <clears throat> when, when the directors told me that Alan was going to play the part of the grandpa, I was ecstatic. I thought, wow, just, you know, just to meet the guy, let alone work with him, was going to be a thrill. And he is, without a doubt, he's one of my favorite people in the world, truly. He's, uh, he's funny and charming and, and kind and just such a good actor. He's, he makes it look very, very easy. And uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm, I couldn't be more thrilled that he's doing this. And he's great in it. You know, he's great in, he could play any part in the movie and, and be great. Yeah, he's, he's just, he's one of my favorite people. This new guy, Steve Gray, played by Jim Carrey, is, is all about rock and roll. He's, uh, he, he's very edgy and he keeps you on the, uh, well, edge of your seat. And, uh, and he's also pretty disgusting. The things that he chooses to do are horrifying and, uh, and physically grotesque. So that's, that's sort of where his, his um, magical world lives. He has a magical friendship um, with the devil, I think. I think Olivia Wilde is, is very witty and smart. I mean, in her own right, she's just a, she's a really good actress, and she, it's a part that could have just been easily kind of a throwaway, let's just do something funny and wear a silly costume and be done with it, but she, she really approached it like a character, and, uh, and I think it comes across that way. It's a, it's a really fleshed out, but funny character at the same time. James Gandolfini is, uh, is complete. See, again, he's one of these really fine actors who can do anything. And whether it's comedy or drama, he just plays a character. And if it's a funny character, then you laugh at it. And if it's a, uh, you know, Tony Soprano, then you don't laugh so much. Um, he, he's just, he's incredibly gifted. And, uh, and really funny. He's funny without even trying to be funny because, again, he's just playing the character. He's not trying to say jokes or be funny. He's just playing it as it's written, as he sees it, and he's completely committed to it. 